morning. The real E. Leezy. Your boy. It's your boy. What's going on, people? You know what I'm saying? I hope everybody have a blessed day. You feel me? Be the best you can be. And, you know, love is life. Like I always say. So let's get into it, man. Since your boy a real one, you know me. I like to speak and talk about every basketball team. Not just my favorite players, not just my favorite team, because I'm a real basketball fan. So, you feel me? I like to talk about everybody. So, I'm going to shed light. You feel me? On oh, motherfucking Jurassic Park. Let's talk about Jurassic Park. You feel me? Let's talk about them boys over in the motherfucking Jurassic Land. The Toronto Raptors. The Toronto Raptors. The 2019 NBA champions. 2019 NBA champions. Y'all gotta give Toronto more credit. I was telling y'all the other day, I said Toronto Raptors, and motherfuckers was like, when I was on Ticket Channel, I was talking about the Raptors. And motherfuckers was, you know what I'm saying? Talking like, oh, the Raptors ain't. And I said, man, y'all tripping. Raptors got championship pedigree. You forgot they did they did take down that, you know what I'm saying? The Raptors did take down that Warrior team and kind of, you know what I'm saying, put their dynasty and put all that other shit on hold. Remember that? And they had three core pieces in that run and they're still there, healthy. OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, and motherfucking Fred Van Fleet. Fred Van Fleet is out here. You know what I'm saying? He ain't no all-star. It's not by coincidence. Like, you feel me? See, Yakim's been an all-star. You know what I'm saying? And then the likes of Gary Trent Jr. Even though he's involved in trade talks. But shit. Man. They on a season high, six, seven game winning streak. Them motherfuckers is coming, bro. 29 and 23 right now. That is, all them niggas got 20 losses down there. You feel me? All them niggas got 20 losses. Like, all the top teams in the East got 20 losses. And around 30, 31, 32, 33 wins. So, first place to like six, seventh place. Is separated only by like two, like three and a half games, like three to three and a half games, and there's a lot of basketball left. So I think anybody that shit could be the ju- that's a juggler right there. We don't know who gonna overthrow and take the East. To be honest, you would think the NBA champions gonna make they run, but they could also be fool's gold though. You know what I'm saying? Remember I said that? Remember I said that? That Milwaukee, I don't know. We put a lot of faith in Milwaukee, but I, they might not make it back, bro. Might. Might. I still like the Miami Heat to come out of the, the East. That's just me. But we'll see. But the Toronto Raptors, what they're doing, and their coach, you know what I'm saying? He's a good coach. And their player development over there, even though my boy, you know what I'm saying, let me know that the the, the player development, their old player development coach left him, and now is player development coach for the Warriors. Shout out to my boy, man, who said that. I'm trying to see... I think it's a mod, a mod something, man. My bad. I'm 
messing my, I'm messing your name up, man. I apologize. I'm terrible with names, man. You feel me? He let me know, man, because he out there. He one of them Jurassic Parks, though. You feel me? You want to shout out to all the Toronto fans, bro. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Ontario, Canada, though. You feel me? Shout out to, you know what I'm saying, Canada, period. Shout out to the Toronto Nation up out there, man. I love, I like the Raptors. You feel me? I like, like some of their young guys, though. I like Chris Boucher. You know what I'm saying? He kind of remind me of a poor man, Serge Ibaka. You feel me? <clears throat> for real, for real. Like, I think Serge Ibaka did wonders for him. Like, you know what I'm saying? He just need to get a little stronger. You know what I'm saying? A little stronger. But I, I, I like what he brings to their roster. You feel me? I like some of their players that they have on the bench. They just, I think the Raptors are really just like one piece away. <clears throat> if they can make a move at the deadline and kind of keep all, without giving up, you know what I'm saying, their, some of their core guys, even though I like Gary Trent for that team and what he brings, I don't really see nobody replacing him, but if they do decide to package up Gary Trent along with some of their uh, other young talent, <laughs> excuse me, then I think that the Raptors need to address their front court. You know what I'm saying? They need to get bigger. They need to get a little bit more size because we know in that championship run, they had size. Ibaka, you feel me, Mark Gasol, and they were real valuable. You know, with Marcus Gasol being a former defensive player of the year, even though he's slow than the motherfucker, but he played positional defense. He had a real high basketball IQ when it came to defending, you know what I'm saying? Helping. You get what I'm saying? Always in the right place. Communicating on D. And then Sergi E. Blocker, you feel me? Him being a rim protector and being able to stretch the floor and knock down shots. Like, I think every team needs a solid big like. You know what I'm saying? A solid 4-5 that can just defend and rebound and communicate on defense. You know what I'm saying? That proves vital. Look what Kevon Looney. Kevon Looney, you know what I'm saying? His motherfucking, uh, his motherfucking stock has went up. What Kevon Looney is doing, he can't jump over a motherfucking quarter. But he has a high basketball IQ. You get what I'm saying? And he's healthy. You feel me? And he has a long wingspan. Like, you know what I'm saying? And he hustles. Like, you feel what I'm saying? He communicates. So that's proven big for the Warriors. He's been holding the fort down until James Wiseman comes back. But I'm just giving an example of what I think the Raptors, where they're lacking and what they might need. Like, you know what I'm saying? So if they can get that, then I think that, you know what I'm saying? We might, they going to be there. Like, you feel me? They gonna be there because we know Fred Van Fleet can create his own shot, and he's a, a guard that's a two way guard. He can play defense. He was giving them motherfucking Steph Curry and them hell in that 2019 finals. I want to point out the fact that yes, Kawhi and Kyle Lowry made a huge difference. You know what I'm saying to that Raptors team? They made a huge difference to that Raptors team. They built the confidence up of those young guys. You know what I'm saying? So, really, it's a shout-out to Kawhi Leonard. You feel me? And Kyle Lowry. See, Kyle Lowry was like, man, I did everything I could. I brought a championship. Boom, I'm turning the keys over to Fred Van Fleet. He didn't want to, you know what I'm saying? He didn't want to be like, he didn't want to overshadow what Fred Van Fleet um, started to become. Like, so, he just said, you know what? Just get me out of here. You know what I'm saying? I, I gave all my blood, sweat, and tears to the Toronto Raptors organization. They gave me a shot. You feel me? They believed in me. And now, you know what I'm saying? He moved on. Like, that's what real veterans do. Like, you feel me? You keep your promise, man. You bring a championship. You don't just run and say, fuck it, I'm chasing titles. Kyle Lowry not chasing titles. He left. In free agency. He was a free agent. He left. You feel me? 
then him and the organization had a mutual, you know what I'm saying, agreement. Well, you know what? Okay, that's fine. Thank you for everything that you guys done to me, done for me, you know what I'm saying? And the organization, you know what I'm saying, reciprocated the energy and loved everything about Kyle Lowry. Consummate pro, man. You know what I'm saying? But you got niggas like LeBron James and shit who want to chase the ring because the grind was too hard. The grind was too hard, nigga. We seen motherfucking Kyle Lowry go through losing season after losing season. Or, I wouldn't say losing season after losing season, but exit to the playoffs. Couldn't make it over that hump. And then Kawhi, Danny Green, you know what I'm saying? And guys like that came over. And you see what they did. So, you know, shout out to the Toronto organization, man. You know what I'm saying? Masai Jerry, man. Shout out to Masai Jerry. You feel me? You got to have basketball. You got to have, like, basketball. You got to have, like, basketball, like, savants in your motherfucking organization, bro. Like, people who understand and evaluate talent. Look what the Clippers doing. Who's over there? The, the, the mastermind Jerry West. Jerry West going to bring the championship to that to that organization. I can for sure guarantee in the next two to three years, you feel me? Next two to three years, the Clippers are going to be the talk of L.A. I'm telling you, watch. But I'm just making my point, man. It starts at the top of your organization, bro. If your motherfucking front office is wrong and they in it just for the money and all the wrong reasons and being selfish, you know what I'm saying, and having fucking egos and hella pride, then it's going to have a trickle-down effect. And I don't give a fuck who you hire as coach. You feel me? These owners get in the way and stunt the growth of some of these organizations. Period. Point blank. It's like a fucking plantation, bro. They don't want a motherfucker to grow. They want a motherfucker to go make that money. But is it about winning? That's what this shit all, all boils down to. Nigga, motherfuckers don't play this game just for the bread. I know a lot of motherfuckers... Nigga who play this shit because they want to win, nigga, at the highest level, nigga, it can be. So, it always starts with your front office. Remember that. You want to build a championship contender. You know what I'm saying? And there's a lot of teams that's out here coming. You know what I'm saying? And that's a testament to their front office. And then it's a trickle down effect. You got to have high character, high IQ guys, man, who's selfless and who competitors, for real. Cause the money gonna, you're gonna get rewarded with winning. The money gonna come. Everybody gonna get looks. If the team is winning and everybody playing a key role, nigga, you gonna get paid. Believe that. You feel me? Because everybody can't be the man. Understand that everybody can't be that nigga, bro. That, that's not how this shit work. You fit into a role, bro. And that's not trying to put you into a box, but in order to win at anything, you have to play a particular part. Even if you work in that company, like, you know what I'm saying? In life in general. Everybody can't be the man, bro. You know what I'm saying? You can be the man behind the man, though. <laughs> like, you feel me? That part. So understand that, man. A little free game for you. You feel me? But Toronto Raptors, they coming. Because Pascal Siakam, like, you can't really guard him, bro. His, the things that he's able to do, you know what I'm saying? Things that he's able to do is pretty solid. Then what about a New Mexico State, man? I like the Pascal Siakam. You feel me? Man, shout out to Pascal, man. We know the story about him saying his father and his family, you feel me? So it's a testament to his hard work, man. He put the work in and, and it like it showed on the biggest stage it showed. So, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Pascal, man. Pascal. Spicy P, man. You feel me? They call that boy Spicy P, nigga. Like, nigga, what? No, I think it's crazy to the motherfucker, cuz Spicy P. And damn motherfucking Baby Drake and Fred Van Fleet, boy. Psh, little Baby Drake, man. You feel me? Out there doing his thing, and then Ogiana and Obi, Ogiana and Obi, big, strong, like 6'5, six, 6'6, six, six, can defend, like, you know what I'm saying? Can knock down an open shot, hustle, you feel me? Come on, man. Come on, man. Them 
boys out there, they got they got ballers over there. But the one thing I would say, oh, I'm tripping. My bad, bro. My bad. That's me. My bad, y'all. My bad, Toronto. My bad. My bad, Jurassic Park. My fault. Shout out to Scotty Barnes, bro. Florida State, bro. <laughs> one of the top rookies in the NBA, man. He's doing his thing about here. Size, poise. You feel me? Ready for the big lights. Scotty Barnes. I forgot all about Scotty. My bad. I love Scotty. He can stretch the floor. Great in transition. You feel me? Long. Get post up. And then coming from Florida State where you already know they get down and dirty over there with the defense. They play D. So that boy ready. Scotty Barnes can be a defensive player of the year. He has defensive player of the year talent straight up. Keeping it under with you. Keeping it under with you. He's a two-way player. You know what I'm saying? And you can't say that about many players that come into the league, especially as a rookie. So the things that Scotty Barnes can do, he has good vision. You know what I'm saying? The guy is long. He understands how to play the game. Basketball IQ. Like, come on, man. High character guy. Shout out to their front office, man. You know what I'm saying? For making that happen. Like, you feel me? So... Toronto, they going to be. I like Toronto. They just need uh, some front court action going. If they can get some front court action, then I think they'll be cool. I don't know who's out there. Maybe they can. You know what I was just thinking? I was just thinking, right? Maybe they can target uh, a Jonas Valanciunas again, bring him back, right? Because he's a double-double machine. The low post presence, yes. Um, I wouldn't say his defense is all that, but he provides them size in the middle. Or if New Orleans is not trying to come up off of uh, Jonas and they ask him for too much for him, maybe target like a Jackson Hayes. We know he was in the. We know Jackson Hayes was was in the news. You feel me? We know he was in a in a press man for some bad shit with the domestic violence shit. Maybe New Orleans is like, yeah, he's young and talented, baby, but we can't have no head cases on the squad. Maybe they come up off of him because Jackson Hayes, you know, he has a lot of potential. He was highly scouted, you know what I'm saying, coming out of college. You feel me? So I think Jackson Hayes might be a piece that, that the Toronto Raptors can go after. Or any, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the Raptors, but I think any team who needs a front court player could target one of those two players and might be able to get something back. New Orleans might be able to get something back in that in that deal. Like it just depends on what they're asking. I know a lot of teams want to build. They want draft picks because it saves them money against the cap. You feel me? And everything. Cause this shit all is about numbers at the end of the day. If the numbers ain't right, it don't make sense to do it. You feel me? So we're just trying to see what's going on with that situation. Um, it's going to be interesting in the next week, man. You know what I'm saying? Trading deadline, and then after that, we got the all-star break. So, it's going to be real interesting. So, we're going to see. We're going to see. But, yeah, shout-out to Jurassic Park, man, and the Toronto Raptors organization. And, you know, I'm keeping it 100. Your boy, the real Elise. See, I could have came on here and talked about my Warriors. That's, I don't operate like that, bro. I'm a basketball fan, nigga. I pay attention to the players, to the game, to the, you know what I'm saying, to the teams, the organizations. You feel me? And I, I want to get love where love is due, bro. You know what I'm saying? You got to get Toronto they props. Nigga, you forgot, nigga, just two. Nigga, y'all must have forgot, nigga, like Roy Jones, nigga. Y'all niggas forgot, nigga, the Raptors just won an NBA championship. And it wasn't no bubble, nigga. <laughs> There wasn't no bubble. Yes, the Warriors were injured, nigga. So what, nigga? That's part of the game, nigga. The Cavs was injured, too, nigga. And the Warriors beat them. And the Warriors was young, and that was their first time there. So I don't want to hear none of that shit, bro. <laughs> nigga, I oh, don't fuck that, nigga. The next man up mentality, nigga. You feel me? It was unfortunate, yes, nigga. But they won, nigga, straight up. Nigga, they tore all them niggas' ACLs off, nigga. They, they shot KD, nigga, and then they shot Clay, nigga. That's how the game go, bro. But, you feel me? Fuck Danny Green, though. That nigga's a bitch for that. But, whatever. 
Like, nigga, you ain't blocking nobody from behind, nigga. You spe- for sure ain't blocking nobody dunk from behind, nigga. It was, you shouldn't even challenge that. You should have let the nigga go. You were still winning at the point of the game anyway. Yeah, I'm still salty about that. Sorry, y'all, but it's all good. But, yeah, man, shout out to Toronto Raptors. Y'all chime in, man. You know what I'm saying? Comment. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe. Fuck with your boy, man. The real one. The real one, nigga. You already know. You already know. I don't even have to say nothing else, nigga. You already know how I get out, man. You feel me? So fuck with your boy. Y'all have a blessed day, man. You know what I'm saying? Love and life. Smile, cry, laugh. And, you know, I'm going to check back later on. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to check back later on with some more motherfucking content for that ass, nigga. Straight up.